My name is Tony Tonkin, I'm president of CPP. In The Guardian this week, there's been a number of articles in relation to First Nations people and how the government is planning to change the system. But first I want to talk to you a little bit about what that looks like in regard to what the articles are saying and how that may impact the system. There are many questions around what this will look like, but let's let's first decide that perhaps the child protection system generally, right across the board, certainly needs to be changed. And there needs to be a new and fresh look at the child protection system. We at CPP have been advocating for that for years. And uh, even though there have been many inquiries, as I've talked about previously over the years, I've discussed all those inquiries that uh, have taken place and that nothing ever seems to change as a result. But is there a looming possibility that within Victoria, the Andrews government may be implementing some changes? Well, we're not too sure. We actually don't know what that looks like. There's the rhetoric, but there's always been somebody saying something about the system not working for people. And we know particularly the system doesn't work at all well for those kids that are in care and certainly fails Indigenous people. So is the system gonna change? What is it that has to change? Now, what we'd like you to do is to let us know what you think about the system itself and what aspects of it do you think need to change so that it actually looks better. Now, when we're asking you to do this, we're not asking you to tell us your story because we hear those stories every single day. What we want to hear from you are solutions. What needs to happen? What If you've had an experience with the child protection system, what does that change look like? How should it be implemented? Is it about the system overall? In other words, is it about uh, the, the way in which children are removed? Is it about investigations? Is it about notifications? Are you noticing the way that you're treated by uh, those that you're supposed to be working with? Is it about the fact that there's no early intervention, there's no warning, there's no effort to work with you in order to change the way you're behaving or to at least identify what those particular issues are and whether or not you can meet the requirements being laid out before you. So what, what do you think are the problems with the system and have a conversation with us about just that? So what we'd like to do now, I'll just go to, um, to the stories that are relating to specifically Indigenous kids and their families. And let's, let's see whether we can develop some ideas together about how this system could be different and work for, it will work in regards to keeping kids within their biological families. Of course, one of the primary issues in terms of First Nations children is that, and families, is that they are severed from culture and they are removed from their family structures. So, and particularly a lot of kids are removed from siblings, which we know in itself is extremely stressful for children. So what efforts need to be made in that area alone? Now, there are thousands of changes, I think, that need to be made. I want to start having a conversation and we'll follow this through to next year about the changes that you think are important in relation to the child protection system, how to implement them, and so that we could have a catalogue of things that need to change according to those people who use the system more than anybody else. And those are the parents who have their kids removed from them. So I'll just go to the article and uh, we'll have a look at this. So this is one of the first articles that The Guardian produced. Uh, Victorian child protection system is creating new stolen generation. This is what the Aboriginal leaders are saying. And there's many people around the world who, would, who have kids in Indigenous situations who would say exactly the same thing. And there are, of course, many, because the, the impact of this in terms of uh, here in Australia is extreme because of our history 
around stealing and taking Indigenous kids away because for whatever reason we think that the state is a better parent than they are and in doing so ignores their cultural background and their cultural heritage. So this comes as a result of an inquiry. So the condemnation comes as the state's truth-telling inquiry, the Uruk Justice Commission prepares to hold hearings on the subject. And uh, Aboriginal leaders say Victoria cultural unsafe child protection system is creating a new stolen generation as the state's truth-telling inquiry prepares to hold hearings on the subject from Monday. Last year, in one in nine Aboriginal babies aged under one was taken away from their families by the state of Victoria, more than double the national average. So this is a moment of shame for those people who live in Victoria and who run this particular system. The chairperson of the Victorian Aboriginal Children and Young Persons Alliance, Karen Heap, said Aboriginal-led organisations have been inadequately supported to keep families together. So there's number one tick. If they're inadequately supported, what sort of support would they require? What would that look like and how would it be implemented? One of our workforce's biggest challenges, and this occurs at varying levels across Victoria, is working with the Department of Child Protection. There are still culturally unsafe practices within the department that our staff must navigate and for our children and families. We need to support Aboriginal staff working with the families and reduce the cultural load. In June this year, a state auditor general's report found that the department was putting Indigenous children into homes that were not culturally appropriate, with 56% with a non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander carer. Over 50% are separated from their siblings and 56% have no cultural support plan. This can lead to children experiencing a lack of connection with their culture and family, and we know that that can be emotionally and psychologically damaging. Um, so 50 witnesses are expected to be called. The harm inflicted on the stolen generation continues to traumatise our people, yet record numbers of First Nations children are being taken from their families at a rate 20 times greater than non-Aboriginal kids. How sad is that? Too many children are still separated from kin, country and culture as a result of detrimental policies and practices. So, and this is an interesting one, Aboriginal-led organisations manage nearly half of child protection cases. Their rates of family reunification sit at about 24%, so a quarter of them almost get re get returned back to their families. Uh, but, in, uh, so why is this the case, that uh, the departments are 12%? So those that are non-Indigenous organisations uh, they're returning kids at 12%. So why is there a disparity of almost 100% between those two figures? Who knows? Um, but something certainly needs to be done about it. So that's, that's the first aspect, that they're having an inquiry and that there is a disparity between the types of organisations and the number of kids that are returned according to whether it's Indigenous or non-Indigenous families. So what in the hell is happening there certainly has to be a major question that we all have to be trying to find an answer for. Now, the other article that I wanted to refer to is uh, about the Victorian government. Now, we know there's been an election there the last couple of weeks and they actually changed the minister. So Colin Brooks is out, they've got somebody else in. Now, we don't know whether that's going to be an advantage. We don't know what the benefits of that are going to be. Uh, probably very little, but given that most ministers behave the same way because they have a bureaucracy that tells them how they should and shouldn't be working, and normally that is insufficient in terms of changing the system. So, but there is some, I think, potentially good news, even though I do need to say I'm a wee bit sceptical about any of these changes because we know that they can use the rhetoric say what needs to be said at the time, but ostensibly nothing ever seems to change. So I guess we live in this quandary of hope that eventually somebody will come to the realizations that the systems need to change and find a way miraculously to do so. Now, the, the government in Victoria though have taken a refreshing approach is the best way I can put it. However, sceptical, nevertheless, about the potential here. But they are doing something 
that perhaps uh, may bring about change. However, I do just need to say I'm still skeptical. So Victoria vows to overhaul child protection as your uh, Justice Commission begins public hearings. Daniel Andrews says too many First Nations children taken from families um, and plans to work with the Minister to devise a new system. Well, you know, as I said, we've been here a thousand times before and we're here again. And uh, there is nothing in this article, I haven't read any information direct from the department or from the minister or from the premier in relation to any of this. So I'm skeptical, as I said, about what it is that they're likely to do. However, uh, I guess it's best to be talking about it than not talking about it at all. Daniel Adams has vowed to overhaul Victoria Child Protection System, saying too many First Nations children have been taken away from their families by the state. Hello, we know that's been the case forever. Um, the Premier made the comments at Government House on Monday as he unveiled his new cabinet for the start of his third term. It coincides with the Uruk Just Justice Commission beginning public hearings to examine the child protection and criminal justice systems. I called this out as an area I want to see us do more and do better, Andrew says. We are taking too many First Nation kids away from their families. I want to make sure that we give much greater self-determination and much greater Aboriginal control to the child protection system when it comes to their kids than we've ever done. I think we can lead the nation, he says. Well, you'd probably lead the world, mate, if you decided to make the changes that are appropriate. Andrew said he looked forward to meeting with the new Minister for Child Protection, uh, Lizzie Blandthorne, and Aboriginal Community Controlled Organisations to devise a new system, he says. I don't want to take any kids away from their parents. We certainly don't want to have a situation where we are essentially delivering cultural inappropriate care. This is not a criticism of any child protection worker. However, it should be. Of anyone who works in kinship care, foster care, they're amazing Victorians and they do us proud every single day. It's not their issue, it's the system. The system is not, not designed properly. Can I just say, um, Mr Andrews, the system is the people. Systems don't sit there in isolation. They are governed and they are controlled by people. So if there's any stuff up in relation to this system, it is the people who are stuffing it up. Uh, we can't... I don't know who else takes responsibility. I'm a bit confused. The social workers, the managers, the supervisors, uh, the person at the front desk, everybody is responsible for this system because you're the bastards who allow it to develop into a system which is uncontrollable and which doesn't have any appropriate ethical or um, any sort of boundaries around what it means to remove a child, the trauma created by removing a child, and particularly in Indigenous um, families about removing them from their culture. So I think you need to take a look at the people that are managing this system in order to bring about effective and lasting change. However, I don't think that you will. If you say you're not gonna, you're not gonna look to the social workers and those people that manage this system, well then, who are you going to get advice from? Who's going to tell you that uh, where their system is falling down if they're not going to be pointing to the people that are running it? I don't understand this. But I'm going to sit back and we're going to wait and then I'll report back to you, everybody here, about this system and how it's supposed to work. And hopefully there will be a solution that we'll be able to present to you about this so-called change system that the Andrews government is now considering. We will be monitoring it and we will be getting back to you as often as we can about any implementations of a system change that we see. And uh, I think it's important to be able to uh, be able to talk about what that system potentially could look like. So we want the feedback from you to tell us what it is that you think can change this system. Now the email address is down below and if you're watching this on YouTube we ask you to subscribe to Child Protection Party YouTube channel so that you can receive any notifications about any of these issues as they arise. Thanks everybody, thanks for being with me. I hope that was helpful. We look forward to hearing from you. 
Take care, look after yourselves, look after your children and be safe. Thank you.